If you had to do this call over again, would you have communicated the same way? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on CNBC. When you are not the CEO of uh, Facebook, Google, or Tesla, uh, being on CNBC at 3 p.m. is a big accomplishment. So thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, so, so were you doing this as a publicity stunt? No, absolutely not. I was doing my investors conference call. It's a company that has been in a remarkable turnaround. Uh, if you look at our stock performance in the last two years, we are up 100%. While, just to stay with the companies that I mentioned, Google is up only 37%, and uh, Tesla is up 28%, and Facebook is up 17%. But the, the way the press treats a company like Cliffs, giving absolutely no uh, uh, publicity and uh, only talking about these other companies, it looks like these guys make a lot of money and we don't. And it's exactly the opposite. We make money. So, so my question to you is why not communicate it in a more proactive and positive way like you just did? Are you really serving the best interests of your shareholders by bashing analysts and th threatening that they're going to have to commit suicide? Uh, I'm, first of all, I'm not, I was not bashing uh, uh, any analyst. I was just mentioning a fact. And uh, mentioning facts should not be punished. If there is bad math, and bad math being used as reality, you got to call it out. But I can only communicate the way I'm communicating when you guys give me the opportunity to communicate the way I'm communicating. So again, thank you very much for having me <laughs> live while the, 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 the market is still hot. And thank you for to give a, a different day to investors in America today. Today we're talking about Cleveland Cliffs, not about in, talking well, about these other things. We are, uh, Lorenzo. You know, uh, we did have one of your shareholders who is, you know, a, a contributor of ours, uh, Jim Labenthal, who basically said he would prefer if you didn't actually communicate that way on the call and perhaps not even participate on the call just because of those personal sentiments and actually seeming like uh, you sort of wanted to get back either at the analysts personally or at people who are betting against your stock. Look, I, first of all, I appreciate Jim being a shareholder of Cleveland Cliffs, and I also appreciate that he was trying to defend me. Uh, the, the, the only thing I did not appreciate is that he said I should not be in the call. That's my company. I'm a big shareholder of this company. I am the chairman and CEO of the company. I will be in all the calls, and I will act on, the, on behalf of my shareholders, and I will defend my shareholders like I did today, and I will continue to do you know, we've seen this kind of insult for, for analysts and, and short sellers with Elon Musk. You mentioned Tesla. It rarely reflects well on a company or on a stock price. I, I don't speak for Elon Musk. I don't speak for Tesla. Uh, I was just mentioning the, the dismal uh, performance of their stock price against my great performance of my stock price. And I don't believe I berated anyone. And uh, if you got offense on behalf of the analyst, I could not hear from the analyst, even though I tried to make him speak on the call. And we would have an interaction. But he didn't speak. He didn't ask a question. But I was not berating him. You I was just wait, mentioning you... that he was bad math. You said you are a disaster. You are an embarrassment to your parents. You feel like you are? I was not talking to you. I was talking to him. Right, right. So, you, so that was, that's berating. Okay. So you, that's your, your assessment. That's not mine. So, Lorenzo, have you heard from any of the other members of your board? Do they support this kind of approach? I haven't heard from any other members of the board, but I certainly will because I have a, a board, board meeting on Monday. But I'm not, I'm not concerned at all. Uh you know, stock is up 50 percent this year. Of course, the company had a uh, very difficult time a couple of years ago. It's come back far from that, as you've mentioned. Uh, so what is so terrible about what anybody is saying about the company? It clearly has not impeded uh, the market from recognizing the comeback uh, in, the, in the company itself. It will over time. It will over time. Uh, things like today help a lot. We are all talking about Cleveland Cliffs. You just acknowledge that we are up. Uh, 46 percent, you said 50, the number that I have here is 46 percent, so I'll take your 50 over my, my, my 46 percent. And uh, again, it's a lot better than a lot of companies that people talk a lot about, and it's a great story.
It's a great I mean, we're talking about it today, to be clear, because the stock is down no, more than 5%. About today. Because... I'm talking about the, the entire story. You are trying to talk about today. I'm trying well, to talk about it's not every day we hear a conference story. call like this. Yeah, of course. CEOs are cookie-cutter people. They like to say the same things the same way for you guys to repeat the same things on air, and life is good. I'm different. You like it? Great. Well, you don't like it? Great. <laughs> well, that part of it, I would say, uh, is refreshing. Um, Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, well, but, but what math is wrong that you were saying somebody's math is wrong? Is it just a different opinion about uh, the valuation no, no, of the company? It's not difference of opinion, and I respect the difference of opinion a lot. Difference of opinion is, is good, but bad math is bad. The consensus was calculated using 303 million shares. And the right number of shares is 310 million shares because we have a convert out. One of the book runners of the convert was Goldman Sachs. So it's totally unacceptable, unacceptable that a Goldman Sachs analyst has a bad mess and puts out a paper before the call, before the call, calling a miss when it's not a miss. Bad mess. The thing why not just let the analysts be proved wrong? I'm sorry? Why not, just let the, why, just, why not just let the results speak for themselves again and, and, and tell but your in story? The conference and call, let Sarah, Sarah, hold on. In the conference call, the results don't speak for themselves. In the conference call, the CEO speaks and the CFO speaks. When the results right. are speaking for themselves, the research analysts made a mistake. And then others copied his mistake, because in today's world, only the headline matters. So it's, it's not like, okay, let's give time to people to realize that he was wrong. That was not that time. That's not the way it works. In the conference call, I speak, and the CFO speaks. Now the results are speaking for themselves. Now I appreciate that I got a recognition that my stock is up 50%. Uh, in one year. Year to date is 37%. In two years is 100%. That's our story. That's our turnaround. That's what I have been doing here. Uh, I, okay. A lot of companies would have the uh, investor relations officer call the analyst and say maybe you should check your math, but <laughs> that's, I guess, a different approach. Yeah, you know, everyone is different. Everyone has his or her own, own, uh, own way of doing things. That's my way. It's working very well for Cleveland Cliffs, for Cleveland Cliffs shareholders, for Cleveland Cliffs employees, and we're all doing very well. Lorenzo, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Every time we have a different company. day, I will be there for you guys. Just invite me, and I'll be on your show, on your show we, with you, okay? We will do that. You don't have Thank to sling you. insults to come on. I appreciate that Lorenzo so much. Lorenzo <laughs> Gonzalez. Yes, uh, thank you good very job. Much. You, you, you said my name perfectly. Good job. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> a lot. Bye now.